been Television News, compiled from the major American networks, wire services, and public affairs offices. Good evening. Two American soldiers were injured today when a landmine exploded in the Sinai Desert. The soldiers are serving in the multinational peacekeeping force patrolling the region. One of the paratroopers had his left arm amputated above the elbow, and the other may lose three toes. West Germany's foreign minister today told his Soviet counterpart in Bonn that he hopes President Reagan and Soviet leader Yuri Andropov will hold a summit meeting soon on arms control. Hans-Dietrich Genscher also told a West German radio station that the Bonn government's goal in arms talks is the zero option plan, elimination of all medium-range missiles from Europe. The head of the Bipartisan Commission on Social Security Reform says Congress must pass the compromise plan completed last week as it stands. Economist Alan Greenspan says the bailout plan will collapse if Congress tries to pass pieces of it. Greenspan made those prop comments this morning on the CBS Morning News. Social Security needs money, and money is what Florida is getting from their crackdown on drug smuggling. Rebecca Chase reports drug busts are very profitable for the government. The crackdown on drugs in South Florida has netted more than $2 billion worth of cocaine and marijuana. Crime is finally starting to pay off for the good guys. Rebecca Chase, ABC News, Fort Lauderdale. A U.S. Air Army C-12 passenger airplane made an emergency landing late this afternoon at Ramstein Air Base. According to USAFE and USWER officials, the plane landed on foam with its wheels up. There were no injuries, and as yet, as of yet, no word on the reason for the emergency. One of the main topics discussed at this year's USWER Sergeant's Majors Conference was the logistics system, how it works, and what to do when problems arise. But as AFN Specialist Ralph Stinson reports, supporting the Army is not just the Army's job. Command Sergeant's Major from all of USWER's major commands were in attendance at this year's conference. Specialist Ralph Stinson, AFN News. A soldier was wounded in a fatal accident at the Grafenbeer training area Saturday. The soldier from B Troop, 1st of the 11th Armored Cabin Fulda, received a shot in the head from an M60 machine gun. The soldier's name has not been released, and an investigation is underway. We're going to investigate sports now. Army Sergeant Doug Pritchett, the Dallas Cowboys are going to the Super Bowl, aren't they? <laughs> Well, I don't know so much about that, but whatever the case, the winners of the second round playoff clashes in the NFL are going back to the drawing boards, and they're plotting their strategies for this weekend's American and National Conference Championship game. Should be two real good ball games. Floyd? Turning back to the news, London political sources say a major shakeup of British intelligence may come from a report on responsibility for letting Argentina invade the Falkland Islands. The sources say the report largely absolves Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. AFN Television News will continue with sports right after this. And now, the amazing memory expert. He forgot. <laughs> Uh, PFC Floyd Vasquez, I'm certainly going to stay up and watch this special action-packed sports special. I sure hope the same's on your schedule. Of course it's on my schedule. I'm sure it's on the schedule of all the wrestling fans. Air Force Sergeant James Boston, I'm going to take you to the mats for the weather forecast. Can we expect some snow? Well, we may have to wrestle with that for a little bit, but it doesn't look like it right now. We look like we're going to have some still mild weather with us. The snow has remained in the hills for us. Today, this evening, on our weather window, things are looking mighty windy for much. Later, I'll have the inside weather, but right now, we'll see what Floyd has for us now. The weather is just about always good for traveling, and what better way to travel than for free? You and a group can travel for free to the Armed Forces Recreation Center. And AFN specialist Ralph Stinson reports there are other nice things about group travel, such as the Welcome Buffet. There are a couple of real nice things about the Welcome Buffet at AFRC Kimse. Start in the morning. Tomorrow, we'll be hitting the slopes with them. From AFRC Kimse, specialist Ralph Stinson, AFN News. Technicians are trying to piece together details of a Turkish Airlines crash in a blinding snowstorm in Ankara yesterday. 46 are dead, and doctors say all but three of the 21 injured are badly burned. It's been a year since an Air Florida plane crashed while trying to take off in a snowstorm from Washington, D.C. Steve Shepard reports that authorities have learned some lessons since that disaster. Air Florida Flight 90 last January 13th, and that's because National, one year later, is just as busy as ever. Steve Shepard, ABC News, Washington. 
The seventh round of talks between Israel, Lebanon, and the United States has ended, and it appears some progress may have been made. A statement says a subcommittee started talks on ending the 35-year-old state of war between Lebanon and Israel. A strong earthquake jolted southern Italy today, spreading panic throughout the heel of the Italian boot. Authorities say the quake was strong enough to collapse buildings, but there are no reports yet of damage or injuries. Consumer advocate Ralph Nader wants to set up a new watchdog group made up to about people who are concerned with mail service. A study released by a Nader group says the post office is more concerned with its finance than its services. Nader says a consumer's group could take care of that. The Supreme Court has refused to change a ruling prohibiting Lubbock, Texas students from praying on school grounds. And the justices also denied a hearing for two Illinois Jewish high schools who say their students should be allowed to wear skull caps while playing basketball. AFN Television News will continue after this. Plan ahead carefully. OPEC officials in Vienna have confirmed that an emergency meeting will be held in Geneva next week. The oil-producing nations will sit down on Sunday in an effort to head off a price war. Stateside, factory use has dropped to the lowest level ever recorded by the Federal Reserve Board, but the rate of decline in December s slowed compared with recent months, and that sparked hopes that January's figures will be better. The dollar held its own today in Frankfurt trading. Through tomorrow, the buck buys 2 marks 34 fennex, the same rate as today. On Wall Street, 30 industrials, 1,088.21, up 7.36. Air Force Sergeant James Boston, things seem to be heating up somewhat on Wall Street. What's the weather like there? Well, that's good they have that indoors because they need to button up their overcoat because it's cold outside, especially on the East Coast, to 81 degrees in Yuma, Arizona. Our weather for tomorrow continues mostly cloudy skies and some cool temperatures. Floyd? Cold weather is good for beauty, you know. Here is a story of how science is making beauty a little more affordable. It concerns cold weather and the loveliest of flowers. Orchids. They are among nature's most beautiful blossoms. John Quinones, ABC News, Miami. That's the AFN Television News for this Monday night. For ourselves and the entire staff, have a good night. AFN News is compiled from the major American networks, wire services, and public affairs offices.